Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at aluminum, low profile, hot swappable, TKL from Red Dragon. Yep, you heard me right. This isn't aircraft grade aluminum, but we may be surprised. I don't know. I've yet to take a look at it. They did send this out to me for my honest review. So I'm going to go ahead and open it and learn right along with you what this keyboard is all about. So let's go ahead and dive on in to the Red Dragon K622 Horus TKL Low Profile. So here we are with the Horus TKL, or at least the box. Um, it is a TKL that has programmable buttons. It has uh, multimedia buttons as well as, um, I think that switches this, uh, it's a barrel encoder, and pressing that turns the mode from volume to controlling brightness for um, the RGB on the keyboard. Now it does have the Otemu low profile hot swap socket or switches and hot swap sockets. So um, I'm interested, I gotta say, but I'll always have a place in my heart for TKLs. And we have that familiar Red Dragon logo that, <laughs> I mean, it's become ubiquitous in, in the hobby, I mean, for in stock keyboards. They have improved. I've got to say that from the first Red Dragon I ever had, now granted, I still have it. Um, it's the K522 full size. I modded the hell out of the thing, and I actually got it to sound pretty good. It was one of the first keyboards I did a full mod. I painted it, I opened that thing. I mean, I did everything you could do to it. And um, it's it's old and beat up, but I still it still has a place in my heart. So anyway, let's go ahead and open up and see what we have in the box. So checking on the accessories. It looks like we have a elbowed. Oh, come for the ride. We have an elbow USB A to USB C cable. I'm going to guess that the connector is on the side then with that elbow. We have a wire keycap puller and we have a horseshoe switch puller. Along with that, we have some spare switches because thank you, Red Dragon, for always thinking of those of us that might sometimes break a switch taking a look at it or a switch just might wear out for whatever reason. Having spare switches in a keyboard that's hot swappable I think is a very customer centric action to take. Along with the keyboard we actually have a little Ziploc baggie with um, I wonder why it's in a Ziploc bag. We got a Red Dragon sticker and we have the manual. So off the bat, one of the first things I know, now it is a low profile, so I have to um, temper my expectations, but it's quite lightweight. All right, so they said it was aluminum. So, yeah, it appears that it is. So this is a low profile with an aluminum plate, because I got, yeah, that's going right into that plate. So, now granted it is um, tray mount, so, but, it has sort of a, a tray design where it's deeper here. I don't, doesn't really look like it lends much space um, to put anything in there beyond tape, and even tape you might be limited to a layer or two. Uh, but the uh, plastic is bottom, the top frame and plate do appear to be aluminum. Let's go ahead and take off one of these switches and see what we have underneath. The keycaps are top double shot only. If I had to guess, they were ABS, but Red Dragon continues to put out PBT, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say for certain. Now with these switches, I do believe, because again, as there's so many, you have to grab them from the side and pull up. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but they will come out. Um, you gotta be careful, because if you get these legs, I mean, opening these things up is really, honestly not worth it. There's, it won't work with a regular opener. And you gotta use tweezers, and if you, pull on a leg just a little too much there's just not enough there for it to stay and it'll break off and then 
to buy a switch but it's got pain uh, like I said this is a this is not a fun switch to um to lubricate I actually started on a um, Iyusu uh, TKL not TKL it was a low profile but they I think those would yeah because these are Otemu I'm fairly sure oh, despite that ping it doesn't really sound awful Let me see. one thing I learned is try to do another key not the same one so yeah it's a bit of a yank that you got to give it it really would be not I mean dab of lube in there <sighs> anyway I just wanted to take a look to see but as I imagined there's nothing below there either so obviously um, is there anything between no nope. there's nothing between the plate and the PCB and there's nothing down in the case uh, that to me seems like a a lost opportunity to to really make this uh, stand out from the crowd uh, just because it's low profile doesn't mean that you can't put enough effort into it to make it worthwhile now granted it does not sound horrible I could hardly hear the ping this way I mean if I put it to my ear I definitely can hear it, but on the keyboard, it, it doesn't sound as bad as I would expect it to. So taking a look, yeah, we definitely have low profile. We have the barrel encoder over here, but we have a TKL that appears to be just a little bit squished so that we can get that row at the top without really um, using too much more of a, of a footprint. I mean, because this feels naturally like a TKL to me. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see what these lights look like. Yep. As we thought, it's on the side because of the cable. All right, that took a minute to light up, but it's probably just booting. Now, I've got to say, I like that. I was wondering if there was going to be the light underneath that and there is so change the effects let's get it solid all right and then change the colors yeah i gotta say that that is pretty nice i know it's simple but it's just it's nice we leave it red for red dragon i mean this probably didn't take much i gotta guess there's maybe four um, LEDs under there but adding that and adding a you know semi translucent acrylic piece which is what I assume they did there that is a cool effect and I mean don't get me wrong functionality of the keyboard comes above everything else but cool little things like that that make it stand out that you know if somebody's going on you know something mobile with their workmates and they're in technical and they're, or they're going to a conference or what have you and everybody pulls out their keyboards there's probably going to be a lot of keychron keyboards getting pulled out because i mean for a while they were really the only um source of at least decent uh low profile keyboards but to pull this out i mean people might be like well red dragon but it, it it's cool it's different but that's just my opinion anyway um I'm sure that it doesn't easily lend to taking this piece out and replacing it. But if, I, if I'm guessing how this is done, this might be an acrylic piece and that could just basically be a reverse sticker. And if that's the case, I might be able to um, borrow my wife's Cricut and come up with something else for me to put there, but getting ahead of myself. So we've got the barrel encoder here. And it does work for the volume. It's going up and down. 
Now, I think this button switches it to the brightness. So we can turn it all the way off or all the way on. All right. I don't see a mute button though. That's kind of odd. That's definitely kind of odd. I mean, if you're gonna have, let's see, you've got these G keys and I think you can program it from here, but I do believe it has software as well. And then you have the macro. So these you can program to be a key or combination or like a macro. And the macros obviously can, can send a number of commands. There is a bit of a, it's probably the LED, but it's very visible that the C and the A are barely getting any light, even though other longer ones still get full light. The RGBs, I know I'm, I'm a sucker for RGBs. I know I say that, whatever, but that badge, I think it's cool for, you know, an off the shelf in stock keyboard to have something that, you know, is a little bit more custom than, you know, other keyboards. That's pretty cool. Oh, let's flip it over, take a look at the bottom. Looks like all we really have is, looks like there might be a, a uh, wireless version since it has this uh, little area. That's usually where they like to put their pockets for their, their uh, dongles. So let's flip up the feet. All right, that's a much better angle, but it's still, it is quite low. But I would rather use this keyboard any day over a Chiclet laptop keyboard. Um, I don't have a keyboard, well, I was going to say I don't have a laptop handy to see if I can fit this on here. But I'm going to say this probably will work with 15 inch and up, but I don't think it will work with 13 inch. I think it would have to be that. Um, I primarily like 13 inch laptops. Anything bigger than that, I just feel like oh, I should just, I'm carrying a workstation. But that's just me. Let's get technical. Today we're taking a look at the Red Dragon Horus K622. It is a wired, low profile aluminum TKL. It also is available in a full size for $15 more. This keyboard comes weighing in at 551 grams. It comes loaded with low profile red hot swap switches. They're Otemu style and may not be compatible with other types of low profile switches. This keyboard's chin sits at 10 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 15 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of three degrees. Raising the only included pair of feet will raise the back to 26 millimeters, providing for a typing angle of eight degrees. This keyboard manufacturer retails for $49.99. So, I've got to say, um, I know I'm a little partial to TKL, so taking that into consideration, I like this as a low profile. I will be coming back to it. I'm at least going to do the tape mod, but I'm actually thinking of perhaps doing just a very shallow, but a silicone pour, because at least with that I can work you know, with and even you know shave it down a little bit after it dries if it's a little bit too thick um and a couple other things to it and i i may just go through the process of actually doing the switches although i would really like to find out if there's if anybody knows of a an excel spreadsheet a table on a web page something that shows the different types of hot swap low profile switches and their different pin configurations so that I can figure out if I can actually, if I could get a pack of switches that are already pre-lubed so I don't have to do it myself and I know that it'll fit this, then I'd like to do that. So I'm gonna do my, I've, di I've done some digging. I haven't been able to find much because I do have, I have the the Nufi Air uh, 96 and I have the the Otemu one, their switches are the same as this one, so I know that much. But I have the, o, the Iyusu, which has the Otemu. It's an Iyusu. I can't remember the model, but it's a TK. No, it's not a TKL. 65%? Uh, I can't remember. But it also uses the same switches as this. And I have a um, XVX. They don't fit the Otemu sockets on the Iyusu or the Otemu ones on the Red Dragon or on the Air. So, 
but they those look more like chalk pens but i don't have chalk switches so i can't compare but i'll have to look that up anyway i think that it's actually pretty cool i'm gonna post it up on my list for me to come to it and mod it as best as i can to where it's because i mean it's not that it's horrible but i mean i'll plug it for a second There's, there's some mushiness in there. There's some noise that I don't like. It just it actually feels bouncy because, wow, that's pretty flexible. Well, it doesn't feel like it's going to break or anything, but there is definitely a amount of flex in there. But It's flexier than some of those faux gasket mod keyboards. I mean, it's... The entire plate is flexing. I, I don't think the case is flexing. Well, it's going down a bit. That's uh, actually interesting. Hey, look. Got a red dragon with some flex. <laughs> um, anyway, I actually find this a, a, an interesting keyboard. Again, I'm partial to TKLs, but I would have no problem throwing this in my bag and actually uh, replacing my um, Keychron K3, I believe, the 75%. Um, because TKL, don't get me wrong, I, I can even work on 40%. It took me a little while to get used to it. But I can work. My word, per, you know, my WPM is definitely not close to anything that it is on another keyboard. But it's improving because um, I set myself a reminder to do at least an hour a week with my 40%. And not just play with it, but actually plug it in and get stuff done. So when I'm forced to do things, usually I end up learning. Um, funny that i have to force myself to learn things but anyway so um like i said i like this design i'm when i open this up i'm going to see about that and see if i can actually create a different badge for it and customize it because that's something that i think red dragon uh, red dragon could do um even if it's you know games or just cool little you know, hell the red dragon logo or a little anime you know, whatever something designs artwork that you guys own that you could put on here for you know badges that you could take in and out you know maybe with like a clip or something who knows but to be able to exchange it so that people can customize that people want to be able to customize their device whatever it is whether it's their pc whether it's their keyboard whether it's their mouse whether it's their phone whether it's their smartwatch and i could go on and on and on people like things to feel comfortable to them so the more options that you give for customization and being able to make one's product stand out from the rest and be able to you know people look at it and be like oh that's jimmy's i know because look at the colors or look how it's set up and so i think companies need to just focus on that a little bit more though i'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys with a sound test of this k622 stock um and like I said, I'm going to move it up my list because I do want to. I know I can't make a low profile thock, but I want to make a low profile sound as good as a low pro profile keyboard can sound. So this having an aluminum top gives me a little bit of hope that I can actually achieve or at least get closer to what I'd like to with this keyboard. So I hope you guys enjoy the sound test. If you've got any ideas or any suggestions for when I go to mod it, please let me know in the comments below. Until the next transmission, good people, keep calm and keyboard on.